You've got a brand new Galaxy Watch 6 and want to get the most out of it? Well, you've come to the right place because I've put together some of the top tips, secret and not so secret features to check out. The best part? Some of these will also work on older Galaxy Watches like the 4 and 5. Just make sure you've updated to One UI 5 Watch. You can check that by going to the Galaxy Wearable app and then Watch Settings. If you have a friend with an Apple Watch, you've probably heard them talk a lot about Double Tap, but you have my full permission to act very smug and let them know you have it too with universal gestures. On the watch, go to Settings, Accessibility, Interaction and Dexterity. Set universal gestures to on, and now you can do things like pinch and double pinch to scroll through options and select something by making a fist. But if you like the idea of gestures for some things and not all, and you don't like this yellow line around your watch, you can also use them selectively to do things like dismiss alerts and calls by flicking your wrist twice. Go to settings, notifications, scroll all the way down to dismiss alerts and calls and turn that on. Now, who's calling? No, thank you. The side buttons can also be programmed to do different things. Go to settings, advanced features, and then customize buttons. Double press the home button and you can go to the recent app, bring up accessibility shortcuts, bring up exercise shortcuts, or launch your favorite app. I love to bring up Spotify this way. Press and hold if you want to switch between Bixby and the Google Assistant. If you're sick of your app screen looking messy, organize it with folders in the same way you would on your phone screen. So just press and hold, then drag on top of another app, or you can also add any app into an existing folder. You can rename them too and also add colors. Simple but effective. But please consider this my official request Samsung to be able to see apps in a list on Wear OS. Please. With the default Samsung keyboard, you might notice that voice-to-text dictation is not as accurate as you'd like, or at least it's not great for me with my accent. One way around this is to download Gboard from the App Store, then set it as your default keyboard. Go to Settings, General, Input, then Keyboard List, and Default, and then select Gboard. Now when you bring up the keyboard, it uses Google Speech Engine, which I found is way more accurate. Because this watch runs Wear OS 4, there are a few exclusive apps, including WhatsApp, Google Calendar, and Gmail. You can install them all from the Play Store, and again, you have my permission to act smug around your friends who have watches that don't run native versions of these apps. Speaking of apps that aren't already installed, the Galaxy Watch 5 and 6 have a temperature sensor that you can use to measure your surroundings, food, drinks, water, and more. You'll need to go to the Play Store and download the ThermoCheck app first. Here's my cup of coffee because I am precise with how I drink my beverages. I only like it to be a 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 48.8 degrees Celsius. So it runs me through all of the instructions, holding it away two centimeters from the object. Let's see if I can drink this. <gasps> Almost perfect. Your watch has another cool hidden nightstand mode while it charges. To get this and other options, you're going to have to turn on developer mode. So go to settings, scroll to about watch, software information, and then software version. Tap on this five times to get into developer mode. Now go back two screens and you will see developer mode. Tap into it and some magic new options are here. The one I'm talking about is keep watch awake while charging. That's just another way of saying nightstand mode for me and it does exactly what it says. So once you have it on, drop the watch on the charger, you're always gonna see the clock face. Normally when you charge, you're only gonna see the charging percentage and the time really small on top. So I love this other method. There's other stuff in here you can really dive into if you're feeling brave, but another helpful one is vibrate on connectivity change. Now, if you prefer the first-party Samsung workout app to track activities, but you still want to send your data to third-party workout apps like, say, Strava, you can do that from the Samsung Health app. Pull out your phone, and in the Samsung Health app, tap those three dots at the top, then Settings, then Services. Select the toggle for the app you want, log into your account, and it will sync your data automatically. You can also display your workout metrics on a compatible Samsung TV or on gym equipment. Open the Samsung Health app on the watch, scroll to settings, and then down to share data with devices and services. Find the TV option and make sure you have heart rate and calories turned on. 
go back two pages and then make visible to other devices. I don't know about you, but I get pretty tired of seeing these status indicators on the watch face when I'm using say power saving mode or I am separated from my phone. You can turn them off in settings, advanced features, status indicators and select hide after two seconds. Your watch can give you the same turn by turn directions from your phone in Google Maps on your wrist. Just open the Google Maps app on the watch then scroll down to settings, mirroring, turn that on if it's not active, but also make sure to scroll down a little bit further and select driving, walking, cycling, or all three. There's so many cool things you can do on these watches and this list just scratches the surface. So if you want more tips, drop me a comment down below. And if you already knew all these, you get a gold star and may your watch be blessed with extra battery life. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.